National Podcast Day is September 30th, but what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. National Podcast Day is September 30th. But what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here uh, in the studios, in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk tech, get geeky with some friends here. Uh, with us on the line, as usual, is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. How are you doing today? All right, all right. And also, back on the show, but in studio, apparently he also has a restraining order against Chilla that he can't be here when he's in studio. John DeGore, uh, at Diggy, you may know him as, on the Twitters. How you doing? Not too bad. Awesome. Uh, now, a reminder, uh, you actually represent AIGA. Yes, here. I am the vice president of our local chapter of AIGA. Which is the Professional Association for Design. Nice, nice. And we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. We're also going to talk to uh, one of the representatives from National Podcast Day uh, coming up here, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of the month. You know, find out a little bit more about that and how uh, you can help other people discover podcasting, for instance. Uh, so, uh, with that, you can also check out this segue, of course, at awesomecast.net, uh, where you can get all the awesome cast uh, shows. Uh, we're also here live Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And that stream is getting better. We'll talk about that uh, here in a little bit as well. You can hit us up on Twitter at AwesomeCast. We're AwesomeCast on Facebook, on Google+. And uh, you can also drop us a line at AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. And make sure to subscribe or follow us or, or rate us, comment, share it amongst your friends, audio and video formats uh, on YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio iTunes, uh, wherever you get your fine podcasts. If we're not there, if you stumbled on somewhere else, and we should be the place where you're listening things, uh, hit us up at that email address, the awesome cast at sorgatronmedia.com, and we'll be sure to uh, see what we can do. Uh, so let's get started the way uh, we, we usually do with our awesome thing of the week. So let's go to our guest here, Diggy. Uh, what, what's coming up here with you? So uh, this Friday, AIGA Pittsburgh has... I'm going to have to pull it up because I'm terrible. Even though I'm in it, I don't remember things. Um, so there's going to be a live design competition. So essentially, there's going to be, I believe, two 20-minute rounds of live design competition. So six designers enter, one designer leaves. Uh, and in that, we basically everybody gets a topic when the, to start out with. We'll have two, basically two face-offs of three-on-three. Mm -hmm. We will each have 20 minutes to design a poster in 20 minutes. And then the judges, which there's two, Dan Rue from CW Press and... That's uh, Commonwealth Press? Yeah. Yeah. Commonwealth Press and... Oh, no, they don't have the judges on this page. No problem. They're on this page. <laughs> um, and Laura Vincesi. Uh, gosh, I hope I'm saying her name right. Our judges, along with the crowd. The crowd's actually going to get to be technically the third judge. I believe they have like an SMS app for everybody to come in and vote on who they like for each round. Hmm. So I am been selected as one of the competitors, which is awesome and moderately terrifying. Um, I didn't actually think I'd get selected. I kind of was like, oh, I'll say I did it to call out all these. So when I call out these other people, I can't be like, well, I'm not willing to do it. So you shouldn't be willing to do it. So I did it and it backfired on me. So now I'm going to be one of the competitors 
competing live in hopefully two rounds if I make it to the second round. Uh, and it's awesome. Like there's, uh, I don't know if you're able to pull it up. The uh, there's a link. I would just Google Furious Pixels the trophy, um, and it's pretty badass that you get to win. Uh, so yeah, like it's really a call. Everybody designs a call to action poster. Then we'll move on to the second round and the crowd gets to participate, which is something I think is really cool. The judges are there to like, you know, add some, like, you know, bring their experience. But the fact that the crowd gets to make a, have a good deciding factor in the, who wins is really fun. And everybody's encouraged to come in and cheer everybody on, uh, bring signs, yell at people, maybe heckle people. Um... I hope nobody heckles me, but it's all encouragement. So there'll be beer and snacks during the show, and it's downtown. Oh, look, there you're at. There, there you are, right there. Yeah, I'm looking fancy. Uh, so there'll be beer, there'll be drinks, beer and wine. It's going to be at 6:30 p.m. on Friday at the Pierce Studio, the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust, which is 805 Liberty Avenue. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. I'm going to see if I could shoot you a link for the Furious Pixel Trophy because that's pretty badass Wait, i got something here you got this might it? Be it this might be it this sounds like a lot of fun so it's obviously there's two 20 minute rounds um what time do you think the rounds will actually start um so 6 30 to 10 so that's probably a little bit tougher to call i'm guessing they're gonna allow like probably like half an hour before the first round starts yeah there it is uh probably like half an hour or so before the first round starts, so everybody gets a chance to talk. They'll make an announcement, kind of explain the rules, stuff like that. Everybody gets a chance to get a beer, maybe a snack, and then sit down and we'll probably go. And then I think they're going to do one round of three, and then another round of three, and technically that's the first round. And then the final round will be the winner of those first two rounds. So the first round is like three on three. There's just three people in one round, like one okay. face-off. So two winners will come out of those two face-offs to compete in the final round, which is one-on-one. -on -one. So the interesting thing is we all get to pick our own topic for the first round. We don't get access to any of the stuff we're going to use. So we can kind of go and shut our stocks and so the sponsor and look around and see what type of stuff they have. But they're going to create light boxes inside a shutter stock that has a bunch of images. And we're required to use at least one of the images they select for the poster. So... Even though we can kind of have an idea of what we want to do going in there, we don't really have, we don't know what's going to happen because we have to use one of their images. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how people adapt to that and what they want to do. Um, but the best part is when you get to that final round where it's the one-on-one -on -one from the survivors, they switch topics. So then you're going to have to quickly adapt to come up with a neat idea for somebody else's topic that they chose. So it's also great because you get to see how different designers will approach that same topic. Plus, you get to see us live. Like They're going to broadcast everybody's screen up on a big screen to see what we're doing live while it's happening. See, that would be awesome. I'm, yeah, uh, and that's why it's terrifying to me. I'm, I'm booked Friday night, but I, I want to go. <laughs> um, just make an excuse or clone yourself. And send that person in your seat. Yeah, I'm kind of going for that same option there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it sounds awesome. It sounds like it sounds like the designer version of like a a. Uh, I always hear about these 24 hour film fests. I've always been wanting to, but really scared to try. Yeah, I mean it's 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 very similar to that, except much much more short. Sounds like more party term. around it. Yeah, more like it's really an event to get everybody out and just kind of have some fun and just see what you can do in 20 minutes. I mean, the design aspect of this isn't like super intense because you only have 20 minutes and good ideas and concepts take time, but it's still a lot of fun to get everybody in the same room and just see what happens. Cause mm -hmm. it can tell a little bit about your process, but it's not like, you know, we're not going to get professionally judged. Our, per, you know, our like lifeblood of work isn't going to be like affected by this outcome because we only have 20 <laughs> minutes. Uh, but you know, it's a good time. It's really just to get everybody in the same room and have a, a fun time messing around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's really important. I know I've been talking about that with, um, you know, with the podcasting idea, uh, with the, with everything. Get her, get everybody in the same room and collaborate a little bit. You know, um, have fun. Uh, you always like I've I've been listening here and there to your podcast with the IGA. Uh, 
uh, Creative Briefs. Creative Briefs, my podcast. And uh, got a new co-host. You got a new co-host. Who'd yeah, Carl uh, left. Anastasia Lance is going to be the new co-host. Okay. So maybe in a month or so, you'll probably hear her first episode. Nice, nice. But but I'm always I'm always amazed by the the um, I always feel like you're looking for the the uh, designers gone wild stories. On yeah, there. well, there's one thing designers <laughs> like to do. It's drink. Um, yeah, that's just that's just how it is. You know, designers like to go get boozed up. Well, design is a stressful job for one thing. Um, for the. Right, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of pressure. It can be there's stressful. A lot of pressure. I think it's a lot less stressful now. Yeah, that we have awesome tools to let us do our work than it was like in the '80s <laughs> and the '70s, like before you know Adobe came in and digital desktop printing came in mm-hmm. and made all these things a lot easier. Like you had old guys like at night like lining up tape and cutting out like stick ups to like mm-hmm. get everything mocked up. What pick like? perfect we say pixel perfect but it wasn't even pixel perfect back then <laughs> which is perfect it was it was truly it was truly a craft so it back was, then you know that's yeah. where the kind of that that mentality came from like those dudes were drinking and smoking all night long like just to like manage doing all that stuff mm-hmm. so i think a lot of it is just kind of like kept on as we moved into the digital age a uh, 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 guy that actually he podcasts with us here for the journal podcast um and he was talking about he i think i think he was doing a paper for the navy or something and he says he's like i worked on an ad for like three days and then there's like i don't like it change it and that's all he got oh yeah i mean dealing <laughs> with clients can be a little can be a little rough if you don't know how to talk to them oh yeah and it's much harder when you're younger when you get a little bit older and if you had a, a little bit of interactions with your client, if you're good, you'll kind of know how to like kind of uh, swim those waters, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, we like we like to drink. And I go since I'm a board member of AIGA, uh, we AIGA National has leadership retreats where all the different chapters from across the nation come for one weekend and kind of have a powwow about like, you know, what are our goals for the whole organization for the next year? Is this, is this the Denver trade, thing I was hearing about? Yeah. <laughs> like uh, we get to trade ideas and experiences with all these people from different cities. It's a really awesome event for the leadership of each chapter. And it really inspires people to do like I do that podcast. Part of where that podcast was born was the was a leadership retreat of mm-hmm. me trying to find a way for AIGA Pittsburgh to provide a different type of value to our members and actually just the community besides we just do a lot of events. So instead, I was like, okay, th- that between doing that and listening to a lot of podcasts, I was mm-hmm. like, I'll just do a podcast. And, that, and that's something that we can provide the community that's but something besides an event or networking, which is what usually a lot of it's focused on networking. But sometimes people want something else if they're going to pay a lot of money. And our membership structure is changing a lot. Like it used to be a bigger deal when it was like you had to pay pretty much like $350, $375 a year after you were like in the field for three year, four years and that was it. And now they've mm. changed it to much more of a kind of like a NPR model where you pay what you what you feel the value it's getting. And each level of membership gets you different access to different benefits. Uh, so that's really helped a, a lot too in changing how we structure our membership. And that that, that probably brings in a lot of the younger crowd too. That's yeah. I mean, I think it's a slow move right now. Like a lot of people are getting used to it that weren't used to it before, but it's slowly helping the membership increase. I think it's not as quick as they would have, like our national organization would have liked. But I definitely have like seen a growth, especially from younger designers, which was really the goal because we would have people get out of school. And then after that initial like you get like three or four years as a like a junior designer price. And even that was like two hundred dollars, which for someone directly in the field a year in one lump sum is really hard to do. So they've changed it to get more of those younger designers to stay in. So we offer them the level they want to pay. We now have monthly payments, which they didn't have before. So it was pretty terrible. And now we're kind of like, oh, we've caught up with everybody else. We could do monthly payments. Huzzah. Uh, but yeah, like the leadership retreats are really awesome. And like when we were in Denver, my favorite thing is that I know one of the like the planners of the event. And so Denver, like it was a plan for Denver before they passed the pot law. And once they passed the pot law, like all the leadership was like, oh, no, what's going to happen? Like everybody's going to be high the whole time. And I was just sitting there. I was like, what are you guys worried about? Like, usually we all go out and get drunk 
every night and then are super hungover the next morning. At least this way, if they go out and get high, all they're going to do is eat some Doritos and go to sleep early. So everybody's going to be really refreshed. My only concern in that would be like, well, you know, are there a lot of designers that have a drug policy that that other other than don't come in drunk? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, like, I think. Like, Designer, most of us aren't like alcoholics. We yeah, just no, like to hang out. And I party. hope not. But yeah, it's like social <laughs> drinking. It's not like we're like at our desk. Most of us. But I the only thing I could think of, it, it, uh, I was a video editor for a number of years, and because it had to deal, even though I never went into a plant, but because of the insurance, we did training for the video, and I could someday go into a plant to go film something. Um, never did. Never left my desk. <laughs> I, I still had to take a drug test because that's just the way it was laid out, you know, um, as a video editor. Go figure. Yeah, I don't I don't think you'll see a lot of agencies and firms giving drug tests. But, yeah, you know, yeah. if you're a designer working for a corporation, like there's designers working for big corporations and they do drug tests like a lot of in-house places. Uh, you'll definitely probably get a drug test. It's interesting. I don't think most of the designers like the booze more than the, the <laughs> marijuana, but oh, that's good. But you know, I mean, if you live in Colorado, it doesn't matter. So exactly, exactly. And that stuff was everywhere. Like there's just like shops, like every couple of like storefronts. Did it, did down it the feel way. like Amsterdam? This is turning to another no, podcast, I mean, but no, it, it felt like just like everywhere else. So you didn't really notice it. Occasionally, you might catch a whiff of it a little bit more, but it's treated much like alcohol there so it's not like it didn't i didn't notice it wasn't like everybody was stoned in the streets just like lounging <laughs> around denver was pretty you know pretty nice place i was less you know i think there's more people lounging in the streets in pittsburgh acting crazy than there are in denver i think it's more smelling weed in pittsburgh <laughs> it depends on where you go um well to, to your comment on on the, the drug testing we we have an internal graphic design department where I work and from, and it's a, it's a role for all over the entire company. Um, within 24 hours of you accepting your position, you have to get a drug test. Hmm. So they're pretty serious about it. No matter, no matter what area you work in from, from tech to, to finance, to design, to anything software developer. Then again, if you, a lot of those people have access to a lot of money, uh, yeah, you kind of want to make sure they're in the clean. But awesome, awesome. So, uh, where's the main URL people can go check that out? Uh, just pittsburgh.aiga.org, and it should be right up on the landing page. Yep, I believe it is, and uh, so is uh, Creative Briefs is on the site as well. That is and, true. And uh, my logo is still on there. I see. Yes, <laughs> under PGH three sixty five yes. sponsor because you. Did all of our videos for PGH 365. So are are those up for people to see on there? Yes. Okay. I would just Google Pittsburgh, AIGA Pittsburgh YouTube. Yes. It should be up there as a whole playlist. It was a blast. It, it was a really fun uh, event. That was, what, geez, what was that, back in March? Yeah. did that? Um, really fun. It was really cool to kind of see the whole setup and tear down and and uh, and see all the pieces. So it was, it was a yeah. blast to go film. And the videos turned out really great. Everybody was super happy. Nice. Nice. Um, all right. Chilla, what do you got this week? So mine's a little re repeat or, or a revisit of something we probably talked about back in, oh, I don't know, June. But tomorrow, iOS 8 lands, which is... <gasps> What's that? I'm super excited for. What is this? Does this mean I can get a third-party keyboard finally? This means you can finally get a third-party keyboard. Does this mean, I can, get, does this mean I can get an IM group keyboard, maybe? You might be able to get an IM group keyboard. I, that I don't know. For me is and and, and like we like we've, we've talked about in the past but a lot of us are on betas and things of that nature um so we've been living living the life of ios 8 for a while um i'm interested not only to see what other people think of it when they get it tomorrow i'm interested in all of the onslaught of applications either getting updated or um new applications taking care taking um advantage of new features um i'm i'm really happy to have a lot of the mess i'm interested to see how people treat the new features and messages where you can leave a group chat and mute a group chat and um quickly send video quickly send audio um 
to me, the messages was the biggest change for me and quick type. Quick type's pretty nice, so it'll be interesting. Will I get more text messages? Or will we just get longer text messages instead of a few word answers? Will we get books via text or emails via text? Um, that's the kind of stuff I'm looking forward to, as well as the things like, um, I think Microsoft already posted something for their OneNote application, um, integrating with the, a lot of the share features. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what widgets come out real quick. Um, the swipe keyboard, uh, things, things along that nature. So there, there's a bunch of questions on what time it'll be released and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm guessing it's going to be early afternoon. But I guess we'll, we'll have to, keep, have hitting to, that, wait to find keep, out. keep hitting that refresh button all day long. Well, so, so I have GM. As, okay. far as, as far as I know, they're not making any changes to what I have. Um, in fact, they, as far as I know, they didn't update anything I mean, yesterday I'm, no, or no, today. I'm just pumped about the third party um, keyboard. But the big, mm -hmm. the big deal will be we should see not just the, the code drop for iOS itself, but all of the applications coming up. So that, that's, that's where I'm excited for. Awesome. Awesome. I can't wait. It, like, I honestly keep forgetting what all changed. And it seems like minute things. Like, it seems like a lot of detail stuff to me. Right? There's no, like, sweeping changes. It feels like this. I guess maybe functionally. Um, especially since they didn't really mention anything at this last keynote. Like, usually there's a little bit of an update. It's like, hey, remember, you're going to be able to do this, this, and this with the phone now. Right? Um, so, I don't know. Uh Cool. Get update. Everything's going to be updated. We'll, we'll we'll see where that leads. I don't know. I'm not terribly excited. Like I think I'm just kind of part of the cycle at this point. Dude, I'm pumped. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the big reasons. Like I, I got an iPhone 5s when it came out last year, and after being on Android for two phones, my first two smartphones, and I really, it. I mean, the only reason I went to 5s because it had a really great camera, mm -hmm. which is something I wanted. But like that keyboard killed me like the peck and type i was so used to swipe but took like no time at all so i'm extremely happy that that's so you're like back. bring back and you know, swipe's gonna be like the first one oh, i know it's gonna be so fantastic i mean now i might leave apple for different reasons because i can't hold a phone anymore but <laughs> i'm probably the only person in the universe who's upset with a 4.7 screen but i uh, yeah, i don't know about upset but i feel like like just if they would have done a four and a four point seven and that gigantor screen. I feel like somebody out there is mad they can't get a window or an iPhone four S size phone. Like I feel like we're we're leaving small hand people behind. Yeah, me. I'm small handed. Small hands. <laughs> They're not giant. You like, don't need a tablet. Yeah, like I know? have giant these weird giant palms and then just these stubby fingers. So <laughs> like I can put that device in my palm but like my my fingers can't get anywhere on it so so you don't even like like their big thing was like well your thumb can reach across yeah like the five like, yeah okay with your giant man hands tim cook okay man they ain't reaching across that 4.7 he's full lies <laughs> lies like the four the the 5s is fine like it's a little tall but yeah i can you know easily keep a hold of that and use it with one hand i had a galaxy nexus before that and like that was using that one-handed and typing even with swipe was super hard for someone like me because like I'm like trying to like get over all the way on the phone. Like sometimes I'd like use my chest to kind of, if I'm walking to kind of like hold it while I do it. But everybody just wants big screens. First I one. see. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the big screen. Uh, I want, I, I, w I actually would like an option where I could go back to the, the iPhone four, four S size. I, I want that smaller real estate which i mean they'll be getting rid of the 4s so everything will be the the 5c and above i'm wondering if they're gonna see where next year i wonder if we'll see next year where there's a six six plus well 6s 6s plus and some kind of other smaller screen iphone mini iPhone mini. Oh no, don't. <laughs> don't do uh, what? what? Uh, not an iPhone mini. Uh, don't call it that, at least. Please. Uh, but maybe they could, you know? I mean, I, they can't. 
in what another year no another two years you'll be through the five s's as the cheap phone think about this a year from now this is going to be the free phone Mm -hmm. you'll get touch id as a free feature at that point unless they do some kind of weird 5c thing with it right yeah that's crazy i watched the i watched today i I tweeted out on the awesome cast account i think i did on my personal account too um the daily show reviewing a camera phone in 2004 uh, please tell me this is recent. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, is this no, like no? From this is 2000? from it's Ed Helms in two thousand four oh on the Daily gosh. Show reviewing a, a a a cam. It's it's on our accounts. It's fantastic. <laughs> it, it just oh blows your gosh. mind. Like ten years ago, we had cameras on our flip phones. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like what. <laughs> The iPhone's getting up there. Just iPhone one's getting up there now. What was that? Two thousand eight. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Yeah, that's seven years ago. We've been with this, and, and we're getting and old, guys. We, just, yes, we, we, yes. We have to deal. This with is it. all. I mean, I mean, think about it. anybody like that's graduating high school. Um, their young adult life. This has been a thing that blah, that I throw on the ground. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Think about 10 years from now, people are going to be like, screens? What are what do you, what do you mean screens? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Oh, men. I have implants. I don't want an implant. Eyeballs. I'll be first. I don't want an implant. I, I'm always amazed. Like, I think, I think, uh, I think, I think most of my family is like this. I, 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 I've noticed, like, hi, Missy. Um, like, how little she opens up her laptop. She's Facebooking all day, but she's not even bothering with a laptop. We didn't even upgrade her laptop because it's like from 2010 and it works fine to type documents in Word. Well, I, I, I can't tell you the last time I went on Facebook on even a, a desktop, laptop, non-phone tablet browser. Mm-hmm. The, the experience is just so weird too. I'm like, what is all this stuff on the right, and why is this here? And <laughs> I'm just like, I have blinders on for the stuff. It's like it's like banner ads. It's just like I don't even see that stuff on the right. And yeah, yeah. When, when I'm at home, I don't open up my laptop unless I'm doing work. Like you know, I have some sort of project I need to get out the door, and I need the app software that's on my laptop and not on my phone. Other than that, I'm on my phone or my iPad, mm-hmm. and, that, and that's it. It's nice you can actually divide. Like this is a work time. You know, and that's kind of, I've been really failing at this lately. Uh, but my downtime is I sit in my chair and I do not put a laptop in my lap, you know, and, and it's like, well, I can only do, unfortunately, like that number of things I can do on my phone is getting bigger. <laughs> so I en- do end up working on the phone, you know, um, or, or even logging in and checking on that render on the computer or something like that. You know, it, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, but awesome. Hey, uh, other new advances, my awesome thing of the week. Um, I'm using it right now, guys. Um, so we talked about a bit ago, Justin TV died. Uh, Ustream has not been a good experience to our loyal uh, uh, watchers every week here on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, there's some pretty, pretty horrible... <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, does this hold up? Which is actually another podcast is in our, our chat room. Uh, F small hands, people. I have a note three and I'm a midget. Well, that's your your prerogative, man. I don't want that. <laughs> if I wanted a tablet, like, I'd get a freaking like, tablet. That's like carrying around a giant book. Yeah, man. It's point. just like you're just walking around the book. I touch screen. Like, I don't. I have a tablet for that type of stuff. Yeah. So, like, I'm on the go. I just want something that fits in my hand. And, but. To your comment on Ustream, is it is it something up with my me viewing the stream, or is it normal that in the middle of a show, <laughs> after I've watched the advertisement, it'll just all of a sudden cut commercial, and then I lose where you guys were in the stream? Yeah, so it's I, like, um, I lose those it's, minutes. it's definitely a. Uh... I think it's an annoyance model to get you to subscribe because I know it's like, I guess the user can subscribe and get rid of ads. Twitch does the same thing. Um, or I can subscribe for a much bigger number that I cannot afford on a podcaster's budget uh, to get rid of those ads. So I'm looking for alternatives. And there's another alternative that I tinkered with a little bit, couldn't get anything going, uh, started tinkering again. And uh, we're using YouTube Live. 
Uh, we actually have I have a uh, test YouTube live stream. So please, if you're on there, please, I, I hope you guys test out the YouTube stream if you're on live.sogertronmedia.com. So uh, let us know how it's working. Is it, 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 I'm not pushing out full HD or anything to it just to make sure we, you know, it's good you know um and the computer's going out a good clip recording and streaming and everything to two streams i'm still going to use stream as a backup um and uh it one one advantage i see out of this first of all how many times have we had issues where wirecast has crashed and i lose the video file right that's very true like if the power goes out or something like i there's no backup other than me um configuring something where a video feed comes out of the main computer into another computer and records it there too or onto a different device um, like those are the things that I've worked through in my head to try to make that work. But if you're using used to use YouTube live, like we have experienced with hangout on live or on air, I'm sorry. Um, whatever goes out live gets recorded at YouTube. So this entire night of podcasting warts and all is up on a YouTube server. If the power goes out, this computer dies. Oh my God. All these horrible things I need to knock on wood. Um, it's there. You know, I did not lose all my shows. I can I can pull that down because I know how to pull down the YouTube stuff. It probably gives me the option to download the entire file as an MP4 uh, because they've been doing that lately, uh, which is really nice if you do Hangouts and just want to drop that into a podcast. More, more importantly, it's not Flash. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I did have some trouble coming up with my browser because I refused to put Flash on this laptop. Uh, some of the browsers did not like the feed because sometimes if it's like... Uh, non-converted feed that you just uploaded it won't load the html5 yet because mm. it's working on it and i think something was weird with the stream too maybe because i was just starting it too um but well, st this, the stream i i can see the stream it, it's underneath the Ustream stream on, on the site yeah it's using the html5 player. it is there it's okay beautiful. good good Good, and that that opens that up so the, the hopefully i can kill off a flash applet I, eventually i'll make that the main player um and the Ustream will be a link as a backup to go for people to go to if something went wrong with Ustream or YouTube. Um, I uh, the the caveats with this, I have been able to put an embed in on Ustream and it just sits there on the site. And I hit I hit record here and it's it's broadcasting to the site. I have to put a new embed in for every event that I do. Because every for, whenever you go to live that you know YouTube. YouTube live, it's a new instance. You know, uh, it's not I turned on a switch on the stream. It's I started a new program. Um, and actually, if you go in here, it, it's pretty cool because you actually go in and mo most have it under like videos and, and uh, uh, like your video manager. There's a drop down and you just go load up like like you're putting up a YouTube video. Let's see if it loads. I shouldn't have clicked anything. Um, but you go through everything and it even has like Wirecast for YouTube. We use Wirecast here. We paid for Wirecast here. A lot for Wirecast here. Um, but if you want just the basics, it, it it will only work with YouTube. That's smart. Um, and you and it looks like you can put a little bit of graphics. It looks like you can do a little bit of inputting um, and pick your ingestion. And it has a bunch of other options too. Um, oh, I can, I can even set my license to uh, Creative Commons right off the bat. I should do that on these things. Um, and you can do monetization on here, probably something I should turn on. Um, but the cool part is also you go to the live control room and they give you a lot of stats. Um, you can see like how many, how many people like analytics for the entire stream. So we've been on for, uh, almost five hours right now. Uh, this is our, our fourth show we're recording, right? And you can see like total total view time in hour six, peak, peak concurrent four. Um, if I go down here, it's just loading up. Let me kill all these tabs. It's that Apple site. It's killing it. Um, you know, average view and you can also, as you go in, I didn't set it up right here, but you can set up a preview and you can actually create highlights on the fly as the video is going. You can you can say just put a, a set start to set end. There's a preview thing that comes in, which I guess you can um, kind of click around into to, through the entire feed. Like if you have any other live feed, you can kind of click back into it. Um, you can insert ads in certain points. You can do broadcast alerts if something's happened. I can say the broadcaster canceled this event. If we had it embedded somewhere or experiencing technical difficulties, please stand by. Uh, we'll be right back. You know, get throw these cards up like this, which I think I accidentally did earlier. Somebody said there was a standby thing. It's been really good about because I have to actually leave Wirecast 
and then open up a new one, re-authenticate YouTube. And and that's the other thing. You you, you hit authenticate if you're logged in on, on your YouTube account. Um, you just pick your YouTube it wants to go to, and it sees that project that you set up in YouTube, um, and you're good to go. It, it sees all the ingesting settings that you've already put in. It sees that I wanted to send it at like 480p tonight, um, and you, you're you're just good to go. Uh, analytics are pretty cool. Like it, it breaks down a graph of like what people. You it actually shows you in the stream. I don't know if you can see the colors on here if you're on video, but it actually shows you what stream people were using. Total number of people, so that's the blue line. And then, like, how many people were on the 360p stream? How many people were on the 240p stream? So I can actually go through this and 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 start looking at. It. Say if I'm pushing HD every week, and I see that like, well, people are generally using SD feed. Why am I going to push HD? So you can start kind of user testing that kind mm -hmm. of stuff and see if like, okay, you know, we'll bump it up to, uh, I don't know, 720 next week. Does anybody even use it? You know, uh, I would say probably not since it's in that little box down here in the YouTube stream. Um, John's saying that it's a uh, good feed. Sounds clear. And F the ads. Everybody's saying F the abs. In the <laughs> F <the> stream. <laughs> Uh, so I, I like, I, I couldn't figure out what I did last, like the la last couple times I tried this, like on Tuesday night, I set something up in advance. The only weird thing is, um, I don't trust setting something up in advance and then going in and coming down here and setting it up because it doesn't seem to work. And I don't know if it's something about the way I think set things up, the way I use Wirecast. Um, I was, I'm actually working with a client to, to use this, uh, very soon for, for a live event, a pretty big live event coming up. Um, and it was just like, I would you know, let you know, I need access to your page to put the embed that day. You know, we, we can't set this up in advance just because I don't feel good about it. <laughs> hmm. I think that's um, something they'll figure out in the future. Um, I think it's just, it could be, it honestly it could even be something I'm doing. Maybe I'm missing a checkbox. Maybe it's something like that. Um, there's even comments built in. Uh, if you go to the YouTube page um, and they pop up here in this little command center. Um, so you're you're good to go. There's actually a, a, a one in here from earlier. I guess Malengo was looking at the page and click through and it says, so is there another chat, uh, for instance? Uh, which, again, kind of the same problem. Well, people can find it. I'll have this thing on through the night. I can see if somebody wandered onto my YouTube stream, you know, uh, through through other methods. And uh, and maybe I can respond to that kind of stuff. Great live comments so people can call you an asshole while you're talking. <laughs> yeah, via YouTube, right? <laughs> Um, but, but generally I, I'm going to try to figure out ways, um, if there's anything I can post in here and say, Hey, go to live that sort of try media for the chat. Like I tried to on some of the other venues, but generally I think this is going to change the game about how we stream around here for these. Um, I, I, I that's why I wanted something clean and it's free because it's YouTube because they want you to do stuff. And hopefully some of you, enough of us turn on the ads for us to, for them to pay for this. And, uh, eventually maybe I will to a point that you'll get maybe the pop-ups or something like that. Uh, if we had some kind of critical mass of live viewers, but you know, for now, I just want people to have a reliable stream. You know, uh, I know, uh, you know, Doug out there, he, he sits there and pulls up the Ustream and, uh, Chromecast his browser throw up on the tv now he should be able to just take the youtube stream and chromecast that yeah i have a, i have a button right here it says play on tv yeah chrome telling me where to, and it's funny because i don't even have a chromecast but it's giving me three options where i can send it to that's interesting because i'm on i think i'm no no i no i'm on a network that has a chromecast and i don't think it's popped up on this one may have to go to a youtube page do you think at some point that that like hangouts would integrate with the live YouTube stream. Actually, when you go, it asks you, it, it says, what do you, uh, it, it, oh, I don't know how it asks, but it's like, do you want a basic or do you want a custom ones? And the basic one, it just opens up a, an on air hangout, which is also cool. awesome. You know yeah, I mean? That's what cool. we do. Mondays we do, um, we do a weekly podcast because that's the thing everybody can understand in the venue. Um, but uh, we've had, they call it educational grand rounds. And they've just been having discussions about some of the stuff around the, you know, around the behavioral therapy place, uh, you know, like methods that they work, uh, nutrition, you know, things, things that are part of the program there. Lately, they've been using Hangout to bring people in and talk to them, bring in experts. Um, last, last week, he had somebody that had um, some kind of, it was a thyroid disease. 
Uh, this week we had somebody come on that, that was talking about acupuncture, which is something they don't have there, but something that they could look into for that their holistic approach. Um, uh, for instance, so so is you know people are into herbs and people are into essential oils and just kind of like collaborate with people across. In this case, for the most part, Pittsburgh, but um, but and kind of beyond. And we actually set that up so they already have a projector in there and they have a, a, a sound system. So we just pipe it through there, so the hangout actually goes up on a projector screen, so everybody in the room can talk to them. You know, and, and Hangout's been really good about, I got a Snowball mic and a Logitech webcam, and I don't get a lot of reverb from, like, the room, like, somebody talking, the the uh, voice of Oz talking to them uh, over over uh, over the big system in there. So it's been pretty cool. It's been a good experience. They could use a better computer. It looks kind of chunky from their end, unfortunately, but uh, the Internet's good. It's really just that box is bad. Mm-hmm. It's like a triple core Athlon. I don't even know what. Um, I don't know what that is. I I, I launch I launch Zubuntu on it just to get a little bit cleaner CPU out of it, uh, and I get a little bit better video out of it. <laughs> uh, but but it was it's it's uh, yeah. I think this opens up for a lot of live options. You know, I mean, how many years uh, with PodCamp we would go with somebody that was the expert in streaming and they had their own servers and everything. And I'm looking at this stuff. I'm like, I'm going to do a PodCamp with this. We just open up a bunch of live streams and go. Is it easy? Is it so So now since you're doing this, are, are you cutting the YouTube stream in between and then redoing your ID or is it one is it one long stream that you'll cut apart later? Well, I, I'm wondering what's what's happening. Well, as far as what I edit, no, up on YouTube. What's up on YouTube? Well, I, well, whatever is going up on YouTube, I'm going to shut off. Uh, but it's there as a backup. Okay, I'm not okay. going to leave that up. I don't think there's much. I don't, I don't think there's much need to leave it. But if something happens, how many times have we had a conversation in between shows and be like, man, I wish I recorded that. Guess what? Mm-hmm. It did. Not as high quality as everything else, but we can snag that now. Uh, it'll be tough to download that giant. We're also going to test the limit. We're over five hours on this live stream. We're going to see if there's a limit to this live stream. They cut you off at three on on, on Hangout, I believe. Um, if you're if you're doing a live thing, uh, but so so in the end, I'm going to have over a six hour. No, I'm going to have about a ten hour file today. <laughs> it's pretty big, man. It's uh. Just for fun, I'm going to try to download it. Ooh. <laughs> just, just as a challenge, just as a, just, just to see if I can do it, because that's what we we'll do. Tell you, we'll tell you how big it is. I had it. Well, I know, yeah, I know. it'll tell you how. Big as it, it starts to download it, if it got that far. Okay. I think so. There's, there's an app like, I nope. use to download some stuff. And it, <laughs> nope. Oh, you, you are using YouTube wrong. Stop it. You do not get this file. <laughs> I'm one of the, I guess I'm probably end up being one of the YouTube abusers. I'm the one that's ruining it for everybody else. Anyways, uh, speaking of everybody else and podcasting, other cool tools and stuff, uh, National Podcast Day is coming up here uh, at the end of the month. I believe it's September 30th. You'll find out here in a second. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk with one of the representatives. So let's go to me in the past. Hey guys, it's uh, Mike Sword coming to you from the past here uh, a little bit for this week's episode. I got a great guest we wanted to squeeze in here. Of course, uh, you probably saw on the beginning of last week's episode uh, the ad for National Podcast Day. And of course, you know you know all I do. I'm into podcasting. Anything to support, get that out there. See that there's a community out there and how it spurred me to join a few communities myself. Uh, but I got one of the experts. He's the, uh, was it the chairman of National Podcast Day? You got it, Michael. Steve Lee joining us, podcastday.com if you want to check things out. Uh, So how are you doing, Steve? Doing really good. Actually, I had to turn off notifications on my phone because it's blowing up from National Podcast Day stuff. It's it's just (laughs) exploding. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, I know. Well, first, uh, let's get into uh, a little. What is National Podcasting Day? You know, what originally transpired, Michael, was... I had heard an advertisement for I don't I don't even remember what it was now National Pizza Day or something, <laughs> and, the, and I was thinking Cheese Pizza Day. I know I was very excited about Cheese Pizza Day that happened a few weeks ago. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm waiting for the pepperoni one myself. There you go. We we, so, we, we do actually have a pizza sponsor on the show, so <laughs> it'd be perfect synergy, in. right? 
I love it. <laughs> and what transpired was I was driving home and I thought, why don't we have one in the podcasting space to assist in getting the word out, uh, you know, about our craft, about our art, what podcasting is. Because I, I've been doing experiments where I've been video pe people and ask them, what's your favorite podcast? And, of course, if they know what a podcast is, they'll respond right away. And if not, they give you that stupid stare and go, well, it's a podcast. So there's a, a multitude of, of collections here that we're trying to do from a podcaster's perspective, from a listener perspective, and a perspective of people that don't have a clue what a podcast is. And try to educate, not only just promote, but educate people on the value of them in the great space that is, is there with podcasting, whether it's for, as you know, education, whether it's for laughter, whatever the case may be, to get involved. So I thought about, and I got with a, a few other podcasters in the, that I know very well, and I asked them if they wanted to get involved with this. So this was almost a year ago that we uh, started looking at this and finally decided to attempt to kick it off this year. Uh, so to really get buy-in, I went to Podcast Movement uh, in August and presented it to the group, and it went over very well. Uh, so we proceeded on with uh, National Podcasting. Awesome, awesome. Hey, you know, and this is something over the years. You know, I mean, I you know, I started getting into podcasting in two thousand six. Where now, like, it was a movement. And it was grassroots, and it was like felt really good to be a part of. And it felt like, like to me, as far as my observing, you know, I, I follow kind of the big time guys a little bit. You know, the five by fives, the Leo Laports, um, and then and then I've seen this kind of flux of like the Kevin Smiths and the Adam Carollas, and and now my favorite wrestlers are all getting podcasts on these <laughs> giant networks. And and then I feel like, uh, you know, you go. To your uh, your iTunes or wherever you go, and you see ESPN, ABC News, you know. And, and I've always worried about uh, the little guys like us kind of getting drowned out uh, with all that kind of big pre big pressure. But although it does seem to validify or the the format a little bit, well, it really does because those big corporations would not be involved if they didn't think there was value in there and getting their information out into, into their customers. Although all they do is repurpose their broadcasts, in, you know, and as an MP3 and redistribute them. Not so much like what we do, come up with great content all the time and distribute it. But it does show the validity in where this space is going. Now, I will tell you, have I had a lot of buy-in from big industry on this? No, and I think we can figure out why. But collectively, and that's what's really great, I think, about this program, is collectively we can become more powerful in what we want to disseminate and how we want to disseminate than the big guys can just from the power of numbers. Certainly, certainly. And, and, and I think there's a lot of learning from each other, too. Uh, we, ju I actually, re we used to do this thing where I get some of the guys together that do like all the various podcasts with me and uh, we have coffee and, and just having like somebody else to kind of pick your brain I'm like, well, we handled this this way seems to be very interesting. Uh, can you speak a little bit more to that community? that you guys are doing over there. Can you repeat that question? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, can you speak a little more? Like, like what, what are you guys doing as far as the community uh, side of National, Pro, uh, National Podcast Day? As far as the community is concerned, I think that's the stepping point. And we've tagged this entire event and program called Start the Conversation. So when we talk about community... Uh, I don't think a lot of that community is built. You know, as podcasters, we talk a lot internally amongst ourselves about podcasting, but not so much externally. And so that's one area that we're trying to help. And as you can see, the way Twitter is going right now with National Podcast Day, I think people are starting to find other shows. Uh, people are finding other interests. And that's the spark that really makes the community happen. And over time, certainly we hope that builds upon that. Excellent, excellent. So if I am a podcaster, uh, what can I do for National Pro Podcast Day? I, I noticed I'm already podcasting on National Podcast Day. Uh, but, but, you know, other than uh, uh, carrying the flag on my shows, what else, what else should I do as a podcaster? You know, we've come up with a list of things that we thought were uh, important for podcasters to know because we have broken down the website into those three areas I talked about uh, earlier. 
and we're providing suggestions on you know what you can do for National Podcast Day. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, already carrying the banner, using our promos, you can go to our website and get all the imagery and either an audio or video promo that you can help uh, promote National Podcast Day. Uh, but the, then there's other suggestive areas like um, you know host a meetup or create a 30 second promo and you know cross promote it with other podcasters. Um, come up with innovative ideas. Uh, we we are still asking people to go out, as I was telling you about, and shoot a video asking somebody of what a podcast is and post it, hashtag it, and we're going to uh, put those all together and create a, a not a full length feature film, but a, a cool video with with all those kinds of uh, uh, comments. But the, I think the real pinpoint of what we want podcasters to do is just. Talk it up. Talk it up. Because as podcasters, we love talking about our craft. And when we have kind of a, a medium here where we're kind of uh, juggling the balls for you, you might say, it, it creates a good uh, way to exchange information. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, uh, and, and uh, as far as that, you know, today it seems like it's easier to get into podcasting. Like you had to have an Apple device, you had to have something else or like try one of these other things. But but like for me, I like Stitcher seems to make things a lot easier. We have a separate podcast app going on on iTunes. Um, um, what do you think of the state of podcasting now as far as accessibility for the for the for the layman out there that maybe doesn't know what a podcast is? Um, you know, is is it is it, you know, really kind of getting to a very accessible point with all these devices and, and, and apps going around? You know, you were talking back in 2007, I was around there too, and there wasn't a whole lot of places we could honestly distribute to. But now, because of the cell phone, mobile devices, and apps, I w we're seeing an explosion. You know, if you look at the overall podcast statistics, I mean, mobile devices, it's just exploding on. And so, we have found our home, I think, in that kind of sphere, although you need to still be in all those other locations when it comes to uh, people having mobility and wanting to listen to the content that they enjoy on demand and wherever they're at. Uh, it, it's the greatest platform there is. Um, certainly, we're going to see the numbers to grow, but I think we're also going to probably see a saturation point. And I think we're also going to start seeing the, uh, the chaff get separated out, um, you know, basically from podcasters that thought this was the most glorified thing they could ever do in their life when they truly find out it's the hardest work they've probably ever done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you've been at this for a while, it sounds like. Um, what, what's been the high point of podcasting for you? Uh, you, you mentioned you mentioned some people this may be like for some, uh, you know, kind of the high point in their lives. But like, what is what's podcasting brought to you over the years? If I can get a little ethereal, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, uh, I run a podcast network called Netcast Studio at netcaststudio.com, and we, we have various shows over there. And I think probably one of the most exciting things for me is the building of the network over time, you know, starting from one show to two and on and on and on. But what is really the most gratifying, the most satisfying aspect of any of that is the listeners, the community that get involved with you. That's what makes it fun. Otherwise, it's like talking into a wall. <laughs> you know, if, if you don't have any response, any feedback, uh, it, there's no motivational factor anymore. So it's the community that really charges you uh, to, to continue to create good content. And people really enjoy that association when they can converse with the person behind the mic. Um, some of the other milestones, uh, I would say, are... I believe it's the last four years we've been up for podcast awards in one category or another. So that's proof of the pudding for us that we're doing something right. And we've been able to also expand in podcasting. I don't know if you're on our platform, but for any other podcasters or listeners that are uh, listening, we also do twothumbsupmedia.com, which is a podcast directory where anybody can go submit their shows to there as a, a directory service for locating or uh, displaying your shows. So there's been a lot of highlights. And then when we get to uh, National Podcast Day, 
when I start putting all these different venues and things that we're doing, I, I'm just smiling. I'm just, I'm just loving the space and loving what we're doing. Awesome. And, and, and it's amazing, like how big it is. Like I always, I always feel like we we're kind of in our own fishbowl, especially as podcasters and everything. But we have our own, you know, round of, uh, of podcasts that we, we listen to. We know of, like, these are all brand new sites to me. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, definitely ones I'm going to be checking out as a podcaster myself. Um, so awesome. Uh, so uh, anything else they need to know about podcast day? I think the, the most important thing to probably get out of this is enjoy the event. Uh, certainly this is our first year. We've already got plans uh, we're working on for next year to make it uh, bigger and greater. Uh, there's a lot of things we wanted to get implemented this year, but uh, due to time constraints and funding constraints too, we weren't able to do that. But share it. Start the conversation. You know, if you're in the grocery line with somebody or at a Starbucks, uh, you know, buy them a cup of coffee and say, hey, have you heard of podcasting? Let me, uh, you know, let me evangelize you about podcasting because it is our craft. It's our art. It's our love. We enjoy it. And let's get more people involved with it. Um, you know, it's a space where it, everybody has their own individuality. It's not set in stone like a lot of radio and TV programming is, as you know. So let's get people hooked and get them over to podcasting. Awesome. It's a perfect way to do it. It's, 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 uh, I, I love it. It's a movement, and the movement's, the movement's still moving. I, I, I love this. I think it's the perfect thing to reinvigorate uh, what's going on and kind of remind people or introduce people, uh, certainly, what, what a lot of people are doing uh, independently. And it's truly really an alternative, uh, I think, to to media. Because I mean, in the long time, we're 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 a lot of times competing with like main media radio for. Am I going to listen to this hour podcast, or I'm just going to listen to radio, or I'm going to watch uh, the Daily Show? And uh, it's really cool to see the big numbers that do decide this kind of thing. Absolutely, because people can now find information of interest in in whatever they're, you know, that they have a niche in. As where if you watch TV or radio. Uh, you really don't have that kind of selection piece, no, so no. that's why it's really important to get people involved. No, it's certainly it's certainly the broad appeal, uh, most common denominator, I guess you could say in some cases. So, um, awesome, Steve Lee joining us uh, again. Uh, let us know all the places they can find you on social media websites. Well, of course, National Podcast Day, nationalpodcastday.com. dot uh, com. Same thing on social media. There, you can find my network at netcaststudio dot com. And we're on social media at Netcast Studio. And, of course, twothumbsupmedia.com. Get your shows put in there. If you're looking for a new show, go over there. Just browse around, look in a category of interest, and I'm sure you'll find a show that you like. It's twothumbsupmedia.com. All right. And with that, let's magically go back to Diggy on the couch. And now a word from our sponsors. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Diggy. <laughs> Diggy is enjoying over there. You can see it. Here's the live Dig Diggy cam. He's enjoying a wonderful slice on Broadway who, who provides a pizza for us and our in studio guests like Diggy. Hey, he's waving. He's waving Finally, for you guys on audio. It. There we go. There you go. This is the sound of a pizza ad and munching. Um, but no, check them out. They're sliceonbroadway.com. They're, they're, they're a great group. Uh, down there uh, on Broadway, out here in Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. And they got a new location over there in Carnegie, PA. Uh, did I say it the other way now? Carnegie. Can Carnegie. Carnegie. How do we do this? Carnegie. 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 Depends on where you're from. You're confusing me. Stop I had it. a discussion with a New Yorker about this a few few weeks ago. Now it's bugging me. Over That's there. Carnegie, isn't it? Carne Carnegie, PA. I don't know. Whatever. No, however you say PA, it, go Carnegie over there. Valley. Because there's a slice on Broadway, but it's not on Broadway. It's on Main Street, but it's still th delicious and it's awesome. And Rick Rick Seebeck was there, um, so please go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com for all your pizza eating needs, um, and uh, tell them that the awesome cast sent you. So let's get into the tech stuff, guys. Uh, we have a few things to talk about. Uh, for one thing, Facebook is testing a way for users to schedule deletion of posts. Why? Because <laughs> they need to be like Snapchat. Is this a Snapchat thing? Is that what we're doing? I You're just know. saying something to piss people off so that you know it's going to piss people off. And then it can automatically be deleted. Is that it? Because I can't see any other reason for this feature. Like, I know I'm going to say something that's really fucked up. And I want to make sure it gets deleted after everybody sees it. Because that's the only thing I can think of. 
Like you're just there to cause trouble and then automatically delete it. Like it, it could be yeah, an interesting. Well, well, you know what posts I could see deleting? Like the the ones for hey win this and enter this mm. contest by doing X. Yes, you know what? I have a I have a client that I put out on Facebook like once or twice a week. It's a coupon because I'm adapting their PDF newsletter to Facebook basically. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a coupon that pops up and it expires like at the end of the month. Wouldn't it be great if 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 somebody not that you really go to a business and go down their Facebook page, but still you could just have like all the coupons disappear after the end of the month when they're expired. I guess I okay, I take it back. I mean I guess if you're promoting a live event and you have maybe a link to a live stream of some sort and then that stream's yeah, no longer there. Yeah. You could have it. There's to no reason. That away. There's no reason to go to live.sorotronmedia.com after midnight tonight because we're done by then. You no, should. you got to come back next Monday. That's true. But they're going to go there and they see an empty chat room and they see a sad Ustream yeah. feed. Um, I guess the YouTube, they, the YouTube will still work. So, <laughs> I mean, that, and, 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 you know, what we're talking about what to do with that. Maybe I will leave that like unlisted, but there in the embed in case anybody wants to go back and watch it. People can relive our Tuesday night podcast day whenever they want the rest of the week. It's a service. And I also have to figure out how to work it into the stats, which I'm still trying to figure out. Um, anyways, I, I don't know. But it looks like they're uh, running the test with a small number of users on iOS devices. So this is not a brand thing, although great ideas for brands. But again, it has to be Snapchat. It, it has to be something like that. Yeah, or they, wouldn't it be great? Just... But what are you publishing like Snapchat <laughs> to your public feed? There, well... Is it public? You know, it can be personal. You could, if somebody knows how to use Facebook, they could say this is just to my friends, or this is just to a certain person. You know, um, or or I. But if you already have those settings set up, then you shouldn't be worried about deleting the posts. True, true. There, there's it's a just for people to start shit. I'm telling you that I can't like for a personal reason. I can't see unless you're there. But then again, it'd be for promoting something. Yeah. That's the only reason where I see well, it. Be great. The only reason I brought up the promoting was because I mean Facebook has to trigger, figure out a way to monetize it. They're not they're not gonna do anything that's just gonna not make them money. <laughs> I have a pronunciation <laughs> of Carnegie <laughs> in the chat room from, from Does This Hold Up. Great podcast, by the way. Look them up on Stitcher. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it, but, it's, but in the, are you talking? Yeah, in the chat though, the way he has it, it's not. It's not the pronunciation because it's Carnegie or Carnegie. So it's how fast or Carnegie. You say it. I think it's the user way like, to say where's Carnegie. The, where's the emphasis? Carnegie. You replace that e after the m with an a, and that's the Pittsburgh way. <laughs> <laughs> that unintentionally rhymed. But <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? What's happening here? We're talking about drug tests. We're talking about how you say Carnegie. That's that's what you know. What that Facebook. just that just feels good to me to say it that way. Um, and but but again, back to but on the Facebook note. I mean, they aren't going to do something that's not going to try to generate them money, and that's that's why I jump to the. It would be nice for, or maybe it cleans. I mean, I'm sure they're keeping the posts, so it's not like it's saving them money on the back end by not having to keep a bunch of posts around. So I, yeah, I don't know. The only, the only thing I can come up with is for for advertising or or promoting something. Uh, it'll come. I don't know. It, it, it is interesting. I think they're they're going to keep poking at more of these experiments. They're going to become Google ish, Google ish with this experiment thing. Except more annoying. Except more annoying, <laughs> and it'll be more take this away posts. I guess um, bipartisan. I saw this app on Colbert this week. <laughs> Apparently, uh, with this app, here, I'll bring up a little bit of uh, network error has occurred. That's fun. Um, I have this app. I downloaded it. I tried it on my Epson Inc. in the studio or in the office, um, which, uh, by the way, skewed, I believe, more Democrat, um, if I recall. But the idea is you want to know if the company that you're supporting with your dollars is supporting the party that you want to support. So you take the barcode. I wonder if it has my previous scans. Uh, it's bipartisan as in buy as in money buy. 
Uh, you take a picture of a barcode. Here we go. Uh, I have a super chill H2O drinking water. And it's got a barcode. Let's see. Let's see what party they support. We're going Republican. You think so? Ah, uh, see, it's loading. They're monetizing water. I might have got too obscure. Let's see. This is a pro. This is a product of super value. I, I don't know. I think that's from the bodega at the that's top of the hill. That's a grocery store. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, super. Wow, that's not what this is. But whatever this is, is 54% supporting. And this is like, this is co uh, campaign dollars. They're, they're, they're basing this on. And after Donation, the, campaign donation dollars. Cam, yeah, right? campaign donations. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, it's not this, but it is from Super Value Inc. And it's a new deluxe three-piece Therma Del Soy body. I think that's a... Oh, yeah. So like, Barcodes are notoriously not always not like, always the thing. Yeah, unless it's like a big same, brand thing. So like if it's a well, if it's super value sounds like a big brand thing, so they'll reuse the same barcode. Okay, for like a variety. So wherever of they got this from. Well, yeah. well, either way, super value is still getting judged the same way, and they're fifty four. They've donated fifty four percent to Republicans, uh, thirty five percent to Democrats, and eleven percent to others. Called it. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, to the point where uh, they tell you. Uh, how much of the board of directors is? Oh, oh wow. this is the, oh I see. This is this is the overall average, and it breaks down to the board of directors, whether they're Republican or other Democrat, uh, what the CEO is, uh, what PACs they contribute to, uh, and the employees. So th wow. this isn't just the campaign dollars. Actually, I was misled by Mr. Colbert, I believe. Um, but this is a. Are, am I supporting a wholly? Republican company if I'm anti-Republican or if I'm anti-Democrat or, or whatnot. Um, it, it's interesting. I wonder what the source is for this. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, how, like, I wonder how does the company you work for know how you're voting or what party you're affiliated with? Well, I don't think it's the company. I think it's, there's probably some sort of public report somewhere that they're able yeah. to gather this information oh, yeah. from. So I'm going to compare 3M and Bayer. But you're saying it gives you employee stats of, about not just the board of directors, but employees, right? Yeah. I'm guessing it's probably high level employees. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe. But I mean, you got to think I like. I mean, if it's like Giant Eagle, they're not going to have your cashier's donation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not donation. I think it was, it's just like what they're registered as. Uh, now I'm looking at it. Um, so like, okay, I, I, I compared 3M and Bayer, uh, the, the pharmaceutical company. Uh, and you can go in here and say contributions to a political party, for instance. Ooh, that's a lot of numbers. Um, and Bayer has uh, donated uh, a bit more than 3M, for instance. Um, yet 3M has donated a lot more to PACs than Bayer. So, I mean, it's it's an interesting breakdown tool, you know, Um that's attached to a barcode scanner, you know. Um, this will be fun at parties and family functions. Well, not for me. Not for me. <laughs> Screw them all. Uh, the you know, the politicians, not the family. I want to make that clear. What's that? Well, Fine patterns. What's that, Chilla? I, I I think this would be interesting to see how this could impact buying patterns. I don't think I don't think it's going to be big enough to impact buying patterns. But still, I think individually, um, if you're very beholden to, if you're very uh, extremist one way or the other, like whether whatever extreme it is, then it might affect your buying patterns. Like but, I have a list of people in my head I want to introduce this app to just yeah, to see what happens. I was happens. just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Again, maybe this will be fun at family functions and gatherings. Um, hey, have you Unless heard? They're of like this? scanning, like the like whatever the meal was made from. They're like in the back in the garbage, scanning it to make sure that they're not eating a meal made out of one contributed thing. Or they another. get home from McDonald's, find out it's a Democrat company, and throw it away. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like oh, this is a get, great casserole you made. Too mad it was made by a liberal Democrat. <laughs> and then just not eat it. You're eating Democrat pudding. Is this socialist tuna casserole? <laughs> <laughs> All tuna casserole socialist, Mike. It's tuna casserole. Oh, man. Okay, that we're... I hope we're probably going to get emails on that one. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna send this app to my dad, though. This is an experiment. Um, anyways, hey, I want to give shout-outs 
to a uh, friend of the show, Walt Ribeiro, which was who who was on a while ago, uh, 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 a month ago. Uh, but uh, he mentioned, I think he mentioned Patreon when he was on, and he was doing the great. Uh, 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 mashup videos with dancers, video games, uh, music, uh, and he wants to continue and see about having it uh, uh, get supported uh, via Patreon. Uh, we've been experimenting that too. Hey, what's up, oh, everyone? he's talking Don't to me. Here. He's here. He's uh, here in my if ears. You're not with- um, but no, he put up a Patreon. You can go check it out. Uh, Walt Barrera is creating YouTube videos uh, over there, and he gives a little bit of sample and talks about like some of the issues uh, he's having with that. So. Uh, uh, it, it, just trying to uh, make some cool products uh, so you can see what he's done in the past he talks about that uh, he's actually looking to try to get $400 per, per orchestra dance video uh, he's currently at about $65 uh, for that with 20 patrons pa- patrons pa- it messes with me so bad on that site uh, but it's a cool project they did they did cool with like very little resources I think uh, in the first video or two that he did uh, so he's really just trying to make something that's a little more high quality. So go check it out, and uh, you can probably have, it's probably linked over there for orchestra.com as a as a starting point for you. So um, I'm I'm curious to see how this. I've heard people doing like I'm going to make a video a month and and trying to get supporters for that video every time I do that. You know, um, but but mostly I've seen like like this weekly podcast or daily podcast or something like that it seems to be uh, the most successful thing that I've noticed so far at least on here. Uh, it's an interesting model and think I think people are still trying to figure it out. So it's kind of like the next step of Kickstarter. So. Um, oh, speaking of Kickstarter, I have another one. Chilla, why don't you tell us about uh, one of these stories you have in here? I'm going to try to find out. Like, I ran into a guy today I wanted to talk about. So I'm not sure how much of, a, of, of anyone in this podcast plays Minecraft, but there's an interesting purchase. Well, actually, there's a bunch of interesting stuff Microsoft all of a sudden just rattled off this week um, as Apple starts to, to, to roll out their new stuff. Um, yeah, Microsoft bought the company that makes Minecraft, mm-hmm. um, which I, I think is going to be interesting. I'm hoping they keep it much like it is today as far as kind of open platform. You, you can kind of run it anywhere. It'll be interesting to see what where they take this. Um, I, I don't play Minecraft personally. I think it's an interesting concept that reminds me of Legos like when I was a kid. Um but I do see a ton of people ranging many, many different age groups um, playing this, whether it be on an iPad, on a Windows device, on an Xbox, pretty much anywhere. And I wonder if this is a way for Microsoft to, to try to, to hit them young. Um, but I do see this going out to a lot of different age groups, like I said. I don't know if you guys play Minecraft or or anything of that nature, but I thought it was an interesting buy. I'm, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent understanding why. It's uh, you know, it's not like they're not known to buy studios. Um, most famously, they bought Rare, did very little with it, mm-hmm. bought Bungie. You know, a little something with Bungie. Uh, my brother actually is very, very much into Minecraft uh, to the point where he's he's doing actually Let's Play videos now uh, and get into that world. That's that seedy world of Let's Play videos on YouTube. Um, so I, I, I kind of want to defer to him and get his opinion on this um, here in the future. And I'm sure we'll talk about this at length a little bit on uh, on uh, Boss Battle here later um, on uh, in on insertcointobegin.com. Uh, but I've heard a lot of theories over the last uh, half a week um, to the point of like, well, this is a service play, you know, because that's something that you can use Xbox Live about and use all those online services that Microsoft touts and get people in on that. Um, I think it they, to this point, what they say that they're not going to take it away from the platforms, the multiple platforms that's available on, um, because I think it'd be a huge mistake if they did that. Definitely. Uh, but I have a feeling you won't see like, on future not Microsoft platforms, you know, like, is it on PlayStation Four? It is, I, it is on is, PlayStation. It is. Um, I know it's on like the old one. So uh, it uh, it's just I think fielding the and the other the other theory was uh, they have a lot of money offshore that they need to spend. Yeah, I, I heard that theory. 
So um, Microsoft's going to Microsoft, you know, uh, and money's going to end money and money's going to buy things. And this is a big thing that is kind of a short bet because it's got the community and all they have to do is not step on it and screw it up. So you have any thoughts on Minecraft? Do you have any experience? Are you, no, I mean, it I is, I don't play Minecraft. I mean, so I don't have any experience. Um, it's the new Legos. I mean, the whole Microsoft is the devil thing. I mean, there's experience with that, but I mean, what are they going to do with it? Uh, like, I mean, like you said, like other than just raking the money, yeah, it's already just raking the in. money that's already made. Cause I think it's just a way for them to maybe, I don't know, try something different because them taking it away from other platforms is only going to hurt them. Mm-hmm. And their brand by them being like, oh, that's my ball. And I'm going to take it home and nobody else can play with it. Because it does so well on so many different platforms that why would you upset people? Like, people aren't going to shell out a bunch of money just to play this game on Xbox One. Like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Or is this another way for them just to hit more and more platforms? I want Sasha and Adela's plans. They want to be. They want to be where the users are, and if the users aren't on Windows, they I, want I to don't, be there. I don't believe most of the theories about Satya Medella's fan plans. Uh, from the chat, uh, Jolo John says, Minecraft is the new Tetris. If your toaster has a screen, you can get Minecraft on it. <laughs> I want a toaster with a screen. And also, uh, uh, Brother Sorg, the expert in, in uh, speaking of, uh, says the PS Vita is actually still in development. So, uh, one, if you see that that gets the axe here soon, I then you know, we'll start sweating a little bit about that. You know, um, I mean, I, it is though, it is like the new Legos and I feel like that's something, hopefully they will capture uh, one, one show I was listening to is saying, you know, really they should start licensing it, you know, much like Legos do, you know, mm-hmm. let's have a Minecraft yeah, you know, I think but the they did mention there was like a, a Halo Minecraft like pack you can get. You know, they just just sell a bunch of expansion packs with like all the other characters or license Disney or whatever. Oh, no, it'd be so much money. I mean, Marvel, Marvel, Marvel superheroes Minecraft. Why not? Right, that works. Right. So Legos are going to be so upset. <laughs> Legos, uh, Legos beat out Mattel as the biggest toy company. Oh, I believe it. Recently, so. There you go. Well, look uh, at all the money they're making from video games, too. Yeah, man. Everything is awesome. I mean... <laughs> Wait for the Minecraft movie, guys. Um, so, I was down at Thrill Mill today for a thing that I had to do. Um, and I actually came across... I'm trying to find... Hold on. Oh, duoscreentech.com is the site. Thank you. But they have a Kickstarter. That's the main thing I was kind of looking at. Um... But uh, this is a very early... I want, to, I want to get your thoughts on this. Maybe pass this along to them. Um, DuoScreenTech.com. Now you all know that out there, and you've all loaded that before I could get to it. Um, but the I, I'm sitting there. So I'm sitting there. I'm doing the video test, right? So I have two laptops in front of me. Because you've seen the studio. That's how I roll. Right? Uh, but no, serious. I was doing a stream on one. I didn't mess with, didn't want to mess with the CPU. So I'm looking at the Ustream, YouTube Live. I'm going to say Ustream for, for, forever, by the way. I'm uh, YouTube Live over here. So he's like, Do you normally use two laptops? And I'm like, Well, yeah, kind of. Depends on what I'm doing. <laughs> so their concept is, and by the way, uh, great video. I, I watched, I, I only had a chance to watch the first minute, but it was uh, kind of funny. So I definitely go, uh, go check it out. It's the duo screen on Kickstarter. I have audio going. I'm sorry, guys. Keep forgetting that's over here. Um, but uh, basically what they're trying to do is create a add on for your laptop so you can have a second screen mobily. Um, the concept that they're doing so far is it folds up. I'll try to find a good picture here. Um, so the screen actually comes out on an arm that folds up with your laptop and it's on a swivel. So you can go like, you know, to a client and say, hey, check this out. Um, they already sold out of their early bird backers. Um, I, I was surprised because I saw how much, how much they had, how far they had gone. And uh, they just started this like a day ago. Um, already at 24,000 of their $100,000 goal, 28 days ago, 116 backers. So apparently a lot of people want an add-on screen for their mobile laptop. Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, uh, Chilla, I know you're, you're using 
very interesting setups over there. I, have, I mean, I've used you, and the the one thing that makes me question the screen is powered, not just by it, magic. It's, it's completely powered over USB, which which makes me a little nervous. So I've used that's how I actually get my third screen. Um, I have a USB VGA dongle. Um, and it, for watching, I wouldn't do it for watching video or for anything like that. Or I would, if I had like a Twitter feed or basic web browsing, I could see it. But I'm interested to see, based on the fact that it's using it for power and the video, it makes me a little hesitant. So the power, it the laptop's powering the screen, basically. Yes. That's a that's gonna be a battery. That's gonna battery. be a, yeah. That's gonna be horrible. That you're not just sitting in the Starbucks without a plug on this thing for for an extended period for one. I thing. mean, it's not like a touch screen screen either, is it? Uh, no, no. Actually, no. I asked about that because I was I was talking I was showing them the the ASUS with the touch screen, and he, he's like, no, we don't have that yet or anything like that. I, I you know, I'm but you know not to rain on their prey. I just can't see it being. A big thing. So yeah, a it's gonna drain your battery. B it's not touch screen. Like mm -hmm. I can't. I, I don't see it as being super useful. Like you just want well, you know what? I more I, screen I could, real estate. Like this at is a gonna be because you don't need that. The whole purpose of having a laptop at a coffee shop is like you don't have a lot of space there. So mm -hmm. what's that extra screen's gonna? You know. I don't know. I've seen them spread out at a coffee shop before. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like do you really for, need that four top lady for like a for like a web developer. I could see it coding on one screen, viewing on the other. Video I editors, more video editors, it. holy crap! Um, video oh. editors, as long as the you'd actually have to put the stuff that you're not that's not having heavy motion on it on their duo screen. Well, okay, okay. If I, if I'm a video editor, yeah, I'm going to have the video playing and the timeline and everything on the screen in front of me for the most part. Um, now, Final Cut's a horrible example of this right now, but typically when I did have the dual screen going on with like old Final Cut, it's all those panels, you know, like Photoshop, all those little palettes and panels and settings are over on the other screen so I can see them, you know, or vector scopes or something, right? Um, so I, I can I can I can see that, but if if I'm a video editor going to a coffee shop, I'm looking for the plug to begin with because I know even on this thing, as good batteries it is, if I'm I'm chugging away at some Final Cut. It's gonna drop like a rock, you know. Um, it's just that's just the way it is. I, you know, maybe this is a presentation thing, you know. But I think I think there could be. I don't. I know. I don't see a mass appeal with this. Um, I'm worried about the bulkiness too. There, uh, he said that they're working on materials like they're they're they're, you know, trying to make it as light as possible. But I mean, you know, it can only get yeah, so light like with you're, all. You're adding on this bulk, and it's yeah. not. I don't. It, to me, it's not adding like a bunch of extra in it like i don't i can't see a value in this because like even if you are doing even design or web development like tabbing between two windows is really not that hard mm -hmm. as opposed to like having this extra cumbersome screen that's going to mm -hmm. eat your battery and you don't want like i mean even if you plug it in depending on what type of laptop you have that's gonna like wear down your battery after time probably a little bit yeah if it's doing yeah. if it's a really tax on the usb power um, uh, my wife has texted me and said so she like the, likes the idea of a second screen, but for her work PC, handy that it doesn't need as much space as a standard monitor. And you notice, I don't know if you saw in the video how it, how it like kind of slides onto this mechanism underneath the yeah. laptop, you know? So at least it like packs up in an interesting way. Um, but again, kind of have to, like, I was walking away to, uh, rock around today with two laptops in my bag and I'm just like, oh man, you know, like a 15 inch and a, uh, what is that? Like a 14 inch? Uh, uh, you know, it, it's just like, you know, I'm glad I don't have to do this anymore. You know, um, that's like, after talking to him, it's like, that's what that's going to feel like, you know, carrying that around. Yeah. yeah like it, when I use two screens, which I dual screen, I'll dual wield screens when I'm at like a, at work or at home, I want a screen that's far bigger than my laptop screen yeah. to work on because I'm doing graphics <laughs> and stuff like that. So like, I want the giant real estate and mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not going to be that. So to me, it's not worthwhile um yeah and, and for me my, my my workhorse is now my laptop so that's why i'm looking at solutions because i have a mac mini on the two big screens upstairs but if i want to you know need the power you know this is a couple years newer 
I'm gonna want to go with this. So any any option like that. But again, he's like he's like you don't dock it or anything. I'm like no, I have a another computer for that. You know, um, but do you miss the 17 inches? The option of a 17 inch MacBook. I never had a 17 no? inch MacBook. No. no, I have had two laptops, both MacBooks. I had a G4 Power 12 inch Power, which was like one of the greatest machines on earth. Um, and then I just have a 13 inch MacBook. So you're Not even you're MacBook you're Pro. going for super mobility on this. Yeah, like off. I because if I need if I really want to get down and dirty, like I'll just do I'll just plug it a, another screen in. Yeah, a big desktop screen. Yeah, and utilize that. But I've gotten pretty good at being able to like work on both screens. Oh, I will say the 12 inch was a little a little rough, but I'm also like that's when I was new and I was used to having like a bigger monitor. I'm pretty good at working on either of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's really a hardcore photo editing, I might go use a bigger screen. But I've always been more about mobility than, than size. It makes me sad when the pictures I use for the podcast open up in Photoshop on this retina display and they're like this big. <laughs> it's like, oh, I should really resize this. <laughs> and I look up, it says 100% and I can't even read the stuff. I'm like, oh, no. No. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the Zion in me is not the first thing anymore. Um, anyways, uh, is there anything we want to touch on real quick before we get out of here? Some uh, some uh, guys in the chat room are getting itchy to talk about video games. Nope. Nah. I think uh, upcoming, I think you have something for Ohio Linux. Fest. Yes, yes. Uh, we're, we're open to talk with somebody from there here in the very near future, if I can actually get to my emails today. Um, and I think that next event was actually last week, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, and but, then we have Microsoft has an upcoming announcement at the end of the month on the 30th. That's right. Uh, like we're going to be able to see Windows 9. Um, uh, Ohio Linux Fest, uh, if you want to check it out, it's ohiolinux.org, October 24th through 20th sixth of this year so uh if you're a linux nut here in pittsburgh that's not a bad drug that's uh people i know have tended to go out there just for a wrestling show so it's like a three hour drive not bad not bad um i know there is also an event i should be at tuesday no this is tuesday thursday night up at the hardware store uh i believe it's their full pitch fest this is all from memory because I saw the email flash by today, and I was like, oh, I'm doing something that day. Um, but they're doing some fun crowdsourcing. Oh, actually, next week, Josh Lucas from the hardware store and Crowdosaurus will be joining us here in studio as well, sampling that delicious slice on Broadway pizza uh, to talk with us. So looking forward to that as well. Um, again, Diggy. Yep. He's uh, got the creative briefs. And this Friday, if you want to see me possibly embarrass myself in front of a live studio audience... Uh, Pixels of Fury, downtown, uh, just pittsburgh.aiga.org for all the information that you need. I want to report for me to see how it went. Yeah, we'll see. How embarrassed did Diggy I want, get? I want video. I, I, think they should, I think they should put this up on YouTube. I don't think they're doing the entire, like you'll get a recap video, maybe some interviews. I don't think okay. they record the entire thing, though, thankfully. Okay. I don't. I don't want that on the internet. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's the night that you need to. Maybe the Facebook. I don't want, I don't maybe, want a permanent like view into how I do my magic. Maybe. <laughs> what? <laughs> like I don't want everybody seeing how I make the magic happen. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm already doing it for one crowd. I don't. It doesn't need to be on YouTube. Wow. Okay. I, I was gonna say maybe that's what maybe maybe that night is what the Facebook time deletions would be for. Oh, I would delete it all, yeah. I'm okay with being publicly <laughs> interviewed. I just don't want my work process. I don't know. It's just it's just weird because like you are opening yourself up. You're already opening yourself up to judgment being at this event. Now putting that event like on a you I if it was like a live internet event, I would not have I would have not submitted no. <laughs> I'll be like, nope. Remember that's how Chachi plays playing video games for twenty four hours in front of hundreds of people. That's playing video games. That's not like that's not judging yourself. Yeah, you suck at Mario Brothers. That's okay. I'm cool with that. Not like <laughs> why are you picking that font? Why aren't you using this shortcut key command? Really, the Saris? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. You just like pick pap papyrus to piss people off. I fucking hate papyrus. I'll never do. It. <laughs> I delete papyrus off the of best, every machine I the work on. The best thing. I don't think we ever talk about this anymore. One of the que what was the question you had? It was oh papyrus or comic sans. In your professional opinion. 
Which is better, Papyrus and Chromis? And he's Sans. asking design professionals, yes. and half of them look like they're about to vomit when they hear the question. <laughs> it's true, it's, they are. It's tremendous. That's the best of the videos. I know, it's my favorite part. <laughs> It's so good. My my one, stance is one was sense. like I'm not going to answer that because I'll probably get fired. <laughs> yeah. Just as I know, I delete papyrus off of every machine I work on. I'm not What's kidding your you. Favorite font. My favorite. I don't know. That's like that's such a hard question to answer. Like, What's your favorite child? It's like yeah. It's like asking you who your favorite child. There's so many good fonts. Um, News Gothic is probably like my standard. I think it's really it's a really nice you know the sans serif. That has condensed versions and regular versions, and it really works well for web content. I got I got an update. They are coming out with Doctor Who DLC, and yeah, uh, well, yeah, that for uh, Mar Minecraft, and there are Marvel skins in there now. So it's happening. Nice, it's happening. I remember when there was like a X Men add on you could download for Quake, like somebody made. Oh my gosh! Yeah. That's really old. That's awesome. It was awesome, too. <laughs> There's like a Dragon Ball Z Quake, I think. Quake. Ugh. Quake I was remember reskinning uh, Wolfenstein 3D. Oh, I tried to make a skin one time. It did not go well. Uh, anyways, with that, this has been your awesome cast. Uh, check us out at awesomecast.net. We're on Facebook. We're on the Google Plus. We're at awesomecast on the Twitters where you can communicate with us as well. You can join us here live at uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I almost said the time that it is right now. Um, hit us up, awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. Please look us up, subscribe to us, rate us, share us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and wherever else. Hey, iHeartRadio is on Chromecast now. Another way you can listen to us. Oh, snap. Just saying. Just saying. Also, I think Disney was the other one. Um, with that, uh, thank you to our awesome chat room that's joined us here all night and telling us about the things that we're missing in Minecraft. Uh, uh, have an awesome week. Yeah.